Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest by Stonemaier Games. This is a one to six player game, Autonoma for a first player, 14 and up and about 40 to 60 minutes to play. And in the game Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, you are going to be basically a pirate captain and you are going to have your loyal crew, a total of up to 40 different types of cards. Uh, you are going to basically be getting a number of cards in your hand and then you're going to simultaneously play one of those cards, uh, one for every day in the round. And as you play them, you're going to flip them over, place them on this track here, and go from left to right, and then from right to left. And you're going to enact their abilities whenever you go one way and the other way. You'll gather loot tokens, which are going to give you benefits throughout the game, and you're going to try and score victory points, these guys here. And at the end of every single round, you're going to stash your victory points into your treasure chest, which is one nice little movable token that's going to give you more points that you cannot lose once you place them in here. After the first round, you go on to the second round, and then finally, the third round. These are called voyages. And after the third round, if you have the most points in your treasure chest, you are the winner. Prepare yourself in the Battle of the High Seas, utilizing different types of game modes, whether they be the more, uh, con less competitive, aggressive style play, and a more of an easier style play, or you can go on the more competitive, aggressive way. There's also different types of cards you're never going to see in your first, second, and even third games because of how many cards are available in this deck here. And you'll be constantly playing this game with unique variations as you go, along with the unique automata system that you can use when playing the game. Anyway, let's talk about the setup for the game, how it's basically played, and then of course, my review. In Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, you are going to be gathering player decks. Each player is going to have their own unique deck, which is going to have its own unique color, which you can choose at the end of the game. You also have a discard pile you'll use, and you're also going to be getting a treasure chest of your color. Each player is then going to get these, as well as tokens. And how you'll get tokens is you're going to take all the different player markers, regardless of how many players are in the game, randomly assign them a spot on the reputation track on the game board. From there, you're going to be finalizing your player board by gathering the tokens located underneath your token. So for instance, as black here, underneath is eight points, and so this player will get eight points to place on their game board, which they can use throughout the round. Then for the game board setup, the rest of it. On the first voyage or first round, you are going to take equal to the number of players, treasure tokens from this bag here and place them down in each of the day spots up to day four. On the next voyage, it'll be up to day five and the final one, it goes all the way to day six. Additionally, the bottom here is going to have unique items. There's chests, amulets, sabers, hooks, relics, barrels, and maps. And depending on the type of game you want to play, you can play either kind of a clear skies or a stormy skies or one that is on the board or mix and match if you'd so choose, uh, depending on how aggressive you want the game to be. You can place these tokens on or just simply play with the board as it stands. I placed all the tokens on the board. There are extra ones that you can kind of make your own as well as automata ones. And of course, the game plays up to six players, and I have here a four player setup. But remember, you're always going to add the extra two colors when playing a four player game or three. You'll add all the extras on the reputation track, so this is always going to be filled. After you have your deck, your discard card, all of the tokens that you're going to get for your reputation, and your treasure chest, along with setting up the board, you're ready to begin the game. After the setup for Libertalia, you're simply going to start the game. One player is going to take six random cards from their deck and put them into their hand. Each player is then going to take the same exact, exact six cards uh, that that player states, and they are going to take those cards as well. So 5, 9, 14, 24, 30, and 36. Every player will have these exact same six cards to start the game off. And make sure that, of course, you populate the tokens on the board for all the different loots for the number of days based on the voyage. And it tells you if it's voyage one, it's days one through four, voyage two, it's all the way to five, and six is, uh, voyage three is all the way up to six. Then make sure that you have your six character cards and that you have gained the doubloons every single round based on the bottom of your reputation tracker. After you've done that, you're going to begin the voyage. You're going to go ahead and choose one of these cards for the first day. You'll take one of the cards face down in front of you and everyone else will do the same and reveal. And you'll place these cards down after everyone has revealed. And I'll just pretend like one of these is for each of the players in the game. 
After you've done that, then you are going to move on to the face of the island. You're going to start with the sun side moving from left to right, and then you're going to go on to the dusk phase from right to left. At the end of each dusk, you'll activate any moon abilities, and then those cards are going to sit into your ship, and they will stay there until the very end of the last day, in which case there's going to be an anchor phase where you'll gain benefits or lose benefits. When you go from left to right, you'll check each character. Does they ha do they have a sun? Do they have a sun? Do they have a sun? And so on and so forth, and you'll activate them if, if they do. The cabin boy will activate. If he's on the far leftmost, you'll gain three doubloons. The stowaway will activate. You'll gain one random loot token from the bag if it has a dusk ability resolving immediately, then discard the stowaway. And the quartermaster, you'll gain one point for each of their loot tokens. Then you'll move on to the dusk phase, going from right to left. You'll see if they have a dusk phase icon. If they don't, they'll just simply take one of the tokens from the day in which it is happening. The first, the first round or the first play is day one. Then when you play your next card, it's day two and so on and so forth. And they'll take one of those tokens. The next card is the stowaway. It also doesn't have a, a dusk ability, so they will just simply take one of these tokens. The Cabin Boy does have a Dusk ability. It says you don't gain any loot tokens, which in this case means you don't get one of these guys here. And the Top Man will go ahead and take one. And uh, then after that, there's just one of these little guys left over, which won't be used. And it will eventually go back into the bag here. These cards will then go in front of the players who played them on their ship. And they will be utilized at the end of the round, hopefully in some way. Uh, these tokens here that you've gained will give you an ability, usually at the end of the specific uh, voyage that you're taking, or during like a dusk phase. So for instance, at the end of the round, if you have a treasure chest for each one, you're going to get five points, and then they're going to go away. The barrel will give you one reputation every dusk phase for the remainder of the voyage, and then at the end of the round, or voyage, you're going to gain one victory point for each barrel that you have. And these can go next to you. They can go onto your little card stack here, wherever, however you want to place them. They're going to be there, there to stay for the remainder of the voyage. After everybody's played their one card, then they're going to move on to day two, and they're all going to play one more card. And they'll do that for each of the four days, which will make up an entire voyage. They'll go from left to right, right to left, gathering these tokens, right to left, left to right, or yeah, left to right, right to left, gathering these tokens, and placing their guys in their ships up until all of the days have been enacted. After that, you're going to check your anchors and see what bonuses that you get. Oh, I happen to have a number of maps. I have two, I get seven victory points. I have three amulets, I'm going to get six points. You're going to then discard all your loot tokens as well as all the loot tokens on the board that were not utilized for some reason or another and put them back into the bag. All of the cards that are in front of you on your ship are going to go away as well, unless they say otherwise. And uh, you're going to take all of your tokens and you're going to discard them after counting them up and adding them to your little treasure map here, in which case you're going to get points. In this case, if I have 10, I'll give myself 10 points and these will stay with me for the rest of the game. Uh, and then one singular player is going to once again randomly draw six cards from his or her deck. After they have done that, each player is also going to copy that. But at this point, not everybody's played every single card of the exact type. So you're going to have different cards in your hand for Voyages 2 and for Voyages 3, which will include more additional days. You're going to also go ahead and populate the board again. You're going to go ahead and check your tokens, see where on the reputation track you are, because some cards are going to move you along. And you're going to gain those doubloons based on the location that you're at. If you ever have to go farther left on the reputation track, you're going to lose a point for each time you do. And if you ever go farther right, you'll gain a doubloon for each time that you do. And then you're just going to go through those voyages. Go through voyage two, go through voyage three, and then calculate how many points you have at the end of the game. And if you have the most points, you're the winner. However, if you're tied, the person who is farthest along on the reputation track is going to be the winner instead. <laughs> and that's basically the idea of the game. With 40 unique cards and only three voyages, with a total of, I believe, 19 total cards, you're going to be playing this game at least two or three times before you can possibly see or have the possibility of seeing new, no, new additional cards. And likely you'll see at least one or two every single game you play, but there's a large variety of different cards that you can choose to utilize. And of course the game can play up to six players. Basically that's how you play the game Libertalia, Wings of Galecrest, or Winds of Galecrest. Let's go ahead and talk about my review. So let's get into the game Libertalia. Now, first thing I want to say about this game is it reminds me of a game. 
It reminds me of Libertalia. In fact, there is a game named Libertalia, not Wings of, Winds of Galecrest, uh, but that game plays fairly, fairly similar. You're going to be doing the same thing as far as cards go. We will draw a certain number of cards, everyone will draw those same cards, play cards face down, reveal them, and then after a certain point in time, you're going to draw six more cards, everybody will copy that, and you'll keep playing cards trying to score as many points as possible. And that's exactly the same style that this game has. The unique style is that this game has that that one doesn't is going to be based on these loot tokens and reputation tracker I believe it's been a while since I've played uh, but these loot cards for certain now uh, basically uh, the dusk phase is going to allow you to gain tokens these tokens you can utilize either throughout the voyage or at the end of the voyage to give you some type of benefit whenever you play certain cards to move you on the rep board either going right or left it can give you a positionary advantage which will allow you to win in certain cases like if there's a tie uh, maybe you both play a one but white is far Further ahead than black, in which case black is going to have to uh, activate second and white can activate first, which can provide a unique advantage in the game. Uh, as well as, of course, at the end of the game, if you're tied for first place, whoever is farthest along on the reputation back is the winner. And finally, of course, if you manage to get more rep than you have available to you, you'll just start scoring points and vice versa when it comes to losing rep. The unique aspect of ga games that are more challenging as far as uh, aggressive go, uh, you can add these little guys here. And of course, the ones that are less aggressive, you can add these, the stormy skies and clear skies. And uh, a wide variety of these are based on preference. Uh, for me in this game, I prefer to not have a lot of cards that can really hurt your opponents. I don't like the idea of everybody getting something good except for one person. Uh, it'd be more okay if only one person got something good or sometimes it was a mix of two, which can happen in the game. But for the most part, you're likely only gonna see one of these nasty uh, purples. These are relics. They're typically going to make you either lose three victory points or every night might lose a victory point, in which case eh, it's not super great feeling when that happens. Uh, but I do enjoy the tokens overall. I like the fact that they are going to be activated throughout the voyage. At the end of the voyage they have a potential to give you benefits or bonus points. Uh, and this game plays, like I said, very similar to the previous game. Is this one needed if you have the previous one? And the answer is no, it's not. Uh, this game, while it does have its own uniqueness with the treasure chest and with the relics and the barrels and amulets and whatnot, as well as this tracker here, it does have its own stylization, but it might be a better game. Uh, but if you already have a previous one, I don't know how much better it's going to be as an experience for you to make you want to jump onto this one here specifically. It does have different types of cards, more unique cards, and if you really enjoyed the previous Libertalia, or if you've never played Libertalia, this is going to be a game that would be very cool to pick up. This game, I do enjoy simultaneous card placement, revealing them and seeing what happens. There's a bit of luck, a bit of strategy, a bit of deduction based on reputation and how these uh, boards are going to go. On one turn, you could get the best possible card, the best possible location, and on another, you can get absolutely nothing, and in fact, get even less than nothing by getting negative points. It can be very swingy. Everybody gets the same cards though, so theoretically you have just as much chance to win as anybody else. There's no unique trickery when it comes to how you draw from the deck and what unique bonus cards you're going to get. It's all about when and how you play the cards and what treasure tokens or loot tokens you're going to be taking throughout the game that is going to net you victory. So it's kind of all on you whether you succeed or fail, but it also doesn't feel super great when you don't get anything and get negative stuff on your turn. Other players can be aggressive towards you. Uh, those are things I can see other players who would normally like a game like this because it is very gateway, very family friendly, very easy to understand, uh, but it has that tendency to kind of be, uh, uh, take that in certain ways with mainly the, the saber. This one lets you discard another player's character from the island or discard a character of your choice from any player's adjacent ship. I prefer the one that's any as opposed to adjacent, giving you more choice so that you can pick on players who might be farther ahead. So that's when it really, really, really doesn't feel good when you hurt a player who's already in last place, and that can happen in this game as well. A player who plays in last place, doesn't make the best choices, can start sinking further and further into the hole, and it's going to give them a bad experience overall, and it might want, want, not make them want to play the game once again. So otherwise, though, let's talk about the quality of the game. Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, I didn't say wings this time, <laughs> is a beautiful game. High quality, Stonemeyer always makes high quality product, and this is no different than the previous games. All the tokens and boards are high quality and easy to play with. It feels good in your hand. The cards are excellent. They're thick, high quality cards with a ton of unique abilities. All cards are different and feel different when you play them. The loot tokens are beautiful, vibrant, and you know the difference between them as soon as they hit the 
field, which is a great feeling when you see a bunch of good cards, cards hit, a bunch of good tiles hit the board. It feels good to grab them. It feels good to take them. It feels good to discard them when you need to get rid of them as well. I like the fact that they have ever-changing boards that are also nice, both front and back. And if you don't want to play with one side, it's going to already come with that on the board here, and you can go ahead and remove it. This board here has a front and back side as well, and tokens that you can utilize if you would like. Overall, a high-quality game, beautiful components, sturdy stuff that's going to last you a lifetime, I would say. <laughs> uh, the artwork in this game, excellent, hands down, a solid, beautiful job done. I love the artwork. It's vivid. It's got a unique piratey themed stylization. It feels kind of like a modern style video game with a twist to it that's got all its art implemented. It works well. You feel like it's part of the game when you are looking at the board. The top of it is the island area, which is going to have the sun and the dusk phases. Down below is your voyage, which is where the sea is. And then all the loot is scattered down on the island where the treasure is. And you can see it all attached to the board. You have your ship area, which on the back it shows your secret little uh, pirate cave. We'll be discarding cards and adding treasure to it. You've got your deck of cards, which has got your own unique stylized ship, your own unique colorization, and whether you're colorblind or not, you'll be able to tell the difference between them because you can see the different stylizations of the ship. Overall, high quality product, high quality art, really, really well done. And like I said, with the gameplay, as long as you don't mind a little bit of a swinginess, the fact that sometimes you can snowball in the wrong or in the right direction, and of course, uh, there is some aggressive play that can be taken place. Sometimes the cards are not going to be in your favor based on how you play, and just because you know what needs to be played doesn't mean it's going to actually help you based on what other cards people may have. Your memory is very, very key in this game. If you're not very good with memorization, knowing what other play cards players have played before, you might have an issue with this as well. Thematically, it works. I explained how the, only the artwork plays into the game, and of course, the quality of the components play into the stylization of the game, moving your treasure chest points along the board, but it all feels good. It feels like you're going on adventures and voyages, and each day represents a new character, either joining your ship or leaving your ship or helping in some way or hurting some other player in some way. There's a single player variant of the game. I almost never play these variants in the games, and in this case, I didn't either. It's something I'm not really interested in. Only certain games I probably play an automata system to it, and usually it's got to be a really quick and easy to set up game. For the most part, this is a pretty simple and straightforward game to set up, not super complex in any way. Everybody just gets their deck of cards and draws their six and starts going at it. But not enough, not enough simplicity for me to want to jump on and, and do it. Uh, Moonshell is one of those games that like takes me five seconds to set up. Maybe it's because I've played it a million times. That's something I'd more likely do. Uh, but for those of you who like the automata systems, I feel like this game, based on reading the rules and understanding the gameplay for multiplayer, you're not going to have a hard time understanding how to play this game that way. If you want to play a single player game of the original Libertalia with some added benefits, then jump onto this one as well. Overall, Libertalia, <laughs> Libertalia, Libertalia is a high quality product. Beautiful beautifully done and as a ton of fun. And if you enjoy a game of memory, a game that will take that with some re simultaneous revealing, you're going to enjoy this game profusely. A high recommendation for those of you who don't uh, have Libertalia or for those who really, really, really like Libertalia and want a little something extra. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, Libertalia. Winds of Galecrest. If you're interested in picking the game up, there's a link down below in the description for you to go ahead and check it out. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. There's new reviews almost every other day, as well as giveaways. And we have Kickstarter lists. We have artists that you can check out. And if you're looking to commission artists, they are there on the page as well. You can check out our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch and on Facebook. And on the day after, I edit it up and chop it up and put it onto YouTube so you can watch the gameplay of a bunch of the new games that have been coming out. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to sailing on the winds of Galecrest with you next time. Nothing. It's an input button I just added because the other button was broken. Camera's like five years old, so I use it every day. Winds of Galecrest. Libertalia. Winds of Galecrest. Sound good? The best? My announcer voice? <clears throat> okay. That should go in the end. What? Your verb. Why? And your... <clears throat> My what? Mm -mm -mm. Why not? Do you never have any bloopers? And do you always have... Because I'm not funny. You always have some you can use, but you never use them. Nope.
You can make fun of me, but you can't make fun of yourself? Yes. That's not fair! Double standard! 